uh, will give you some nice introduction. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, okay. Okay. Well, yeah. uh, uh, lady and gentlemen, uh, welcome to our first 2023 uh, St. Paul Speaker Series event. And today we're featuring uh, Dr. Charles Mowe Mongole, uh, who's the uh, Chief Executive for the CEC, which is the Citizens Economic Empowerment Commission in Zambia. Um, he has a PhD in entrepreneurship with a bias in uh, corporate entrepreneurship from the University of Pretoria. He has a master's in economics from the University of Zambia and a bachelor's in economics from the University of Zambia as well. And uh, several other um, uh, qualifications related to his task. And uh, right now he's a, I said uh, chief executive, but actually the correct title is director general of the CEC. So he's going to talk to us about uh, this organization that's very important to the um, economy of Zambia. And uh, we're gathered here to learn uh, how we can uh, benefit from this uh, institution. Um, Dr. Mungwe, the, the participants in this group, um, alumni of St. Paul Secondary School, which is in Mulungushi in Kabwe. And uh, they are all, all over the world. As you could see, uh, your friend, uh, Professor Iswanisa is in Toronto, but he wants to hear from you. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, uh, that's my... That's my childhood friend. Exactly, exactly. Um, so his father all... used to, his, uh, may, may I add, his father used to whip us a lot. He no. knows that very well. <laughs> that was a norm those days. <laughs> Teachers were disciplinarians. <laughs> we want to hear why you were selected to be beaten more than everybody else. <laughs> uh, yeah, but we are, we are uh, very, um, uh, I mean, uh, professional-wise and career-wise, we have various, you know, interests and so forth. Uh, but uh, uh, when uh, Jason Kazilimani suggested that you be the first speaker for this uh, series in 2023, we got so much interest. And some people sent questions ahead of time, which I forwarded to you. So without much ado, uh, Doc, uh, you could uh, start. And if you have a PowerPoint to share, you could actually share it. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, it, it's really interesting. Uh, it's great that um, uh, we have this um, um, opportunity to, to interact. Um, more so that uh, uh, you, you are you're outside this environment. And so we want to tap into uh, you know, that dimension also. I'm just excited to interact with you and you know from all corners of the globe. So we, without wasting time, I, I intend to just um, take you through uh, primarily the products that we have. And then after that, I'll have a, you know, I'll, I'll make a few statements, you know, to try and see how, how we can then rally behind this, uh, because I see this as a very important opportunity for Zambians in diaspora and in, in different uh, respects to actually appreciate what's going on um, in our country, what we're trying to do to fast track economic development. So let me just uh, quickly then take you through. So I'll, I'll take you through uh, the 2023 empowerment products to start with. And, and, and I'll be saying a number of things around that. The idea behind this, uh, both the 2022 and 2023 empowerment products that we are we are uh, putting up as loan product is is to is to remain in tandem with the eighth national development plan that the country has you know the government has put in place. As you know, we have um, Vision 2030. Then we also have um, the eighth national development plan. Which is which? Which then needs to be implemented. These are segmented five-year plans that must run, um, you know, for the purposes of um, achieving Vision 2030 and beyond. And um, so CEC directly taps into that as an implementing agent of the government. We are not the only ones, but um, you know, we are one strategic uh, implementing agent in that respect. 
Uh, now, uh, I, I don't really, I'm not going to bother you so much. Um, I believe um, you are appropriately schooled uh, in terms of what the AIDS National Development Plan is all about. What I could, what I could actually focus on is our products that respond to the AIDS National Development Plan. Um, the AIDS National Development Plan, in summary, <clears throat> is focusing on industrializing the economy. Uh, and the taking into account also not just the urban, but with a bias also um, with you know in the direction of the rural perspective. Um, we, we we need as a country as an economy to create industries where resources are. Um, you know what's obtaining at the moment in most of our um, provinces or districts is that uh, we, you know, they are simply extraction centers where we, 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 we extract resources and we, 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 we ship them, we transport those resources either to Lusaka or indeed even outside the country, you know, talk of minerals. Uh, what we are trying to do um, in our own sphere is to instigate processing, firstly in agriculture to ensure that we enhance production uh, we have farmers that take agriculture seriously, that they are not just farming during the rain season, but they are able to engage in farming throughout the year to run farming as a business. And when we talk of that, then we say, you know, if that happens, then we'll have a lot of um, grain, we'll have a lot of um, uh, vegetables, uh, then we need to think of processing. So we, and at that level, we are saying we must process whatever we have to process, but to the level that helps us to, to meet international standard. Because we, we, as an economy, we must strive to be uh, globally competitive, uh, which, is, which is a key issue, especially now that uh, we do have, um, even uh, on our continent, we have the, the um, the free trade market that, that is tying the, the entire globe, I mean, the entire continent, African continent. Uh, and that, that's a huge market that we have. Uh, but beyond that, we have um, the other markets, but we must then aspire to achieve um, products that, that have that international standard uh, or quality. So it's, it's along those lines everything that we have as a country we feel we have come of age to transition into serious processing literally everything that we have i mean we talk of uh, close to 60 years of independence and 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 then um, we are still in terms of structure we are still a primary producer you know i, I say this the only problem is that we don't get ashamed uh, as a people, I think we don't get embarrassed. Uh, there are certain things I think we should have already done away with uh, in terms of our economic structure. But we need to aspire to get to those levels so that, uh, and, and I mean, the fact is we do have Zambians that actually can, can engage in these uh, enterprises. Of course, uh, we are not uh, saying we, we have nothing to do with uh, FDI, certainly we do. Um, but we can also at that level talk of joint ventures, we talk of partnerships, we want to participate in wealth creation as a country, as, as, as citizens, we want to participate in job creation as citizens, we think uh, we have what it takes to create uh, sustainable enterprises, that's the direction that we're taking as CEEC, so what you see in this product, the configuration is in different respects. Um, when you talk of agro-processing, um, uh, especially, uh, you know, agro-processing and light manufacturing, um, you talk of mining, the energy, and so on and so forth, and I'll talk about each one of them specifically. Some of them uh, are much more gap-filling than, you know, trying to get into the international perspective. When you talk of, for instance, marketeer booster, uh, for, for bulking cold storage facilities and processing facilities. Um, 
you know, they 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 have their own role uh, in the in the in the structure of our economy. Let me let me take you just through this. And by the way, uh, Bamson, how many how many minutes are you giving? Uh, I really need to be constrained. Okay. <laughs> and normally we will speak for like one hour. You speak for like thirty minutes, and then uh, oh, okay. uh, we have questions. Uh, the meetings will last up to one hour. Fantastic. That that that's uh, good enough. Okay. So, from agro processing point of view, like I said, this is when you talk of crops, we talk of livestock, we talk of poultry, um, um, literally anything that we can process from grain. Um, even, by the way, from, um, you know, things that are not even traditional, uh, but, uh, but they pertain to what we can broadly call agriculture, we need to deal with all those things. Now, um, all our loans, they take a 12% interest, simple interest. And um, it's, it's the Zambians. So either you, are, you apply as an individual, you apply as an enterprise, or you apply as cooperative, um, we will take you. Uh, we, you apply as a company. As a company, you have um, different levels. Company owned by Zambians, uh, or company influenced by Zambians in terms of uh, percentages, as well as uh, um, companies that are largely, when you look at the structure, most of the people in there are Zambians. Um, at the level of employees. Uh, we, 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 as a commission, are also in the process. We have the mandate to drive the formalization exercise, you know, the formalization of the informal sector, which you know very well. Largely, our country is highly informal. I think now we are still somewhere in the upwards of 70% informal. So if you drive around, especially if you go in our compounds, um, you, you see a lot of um, tuntemba and uh, you know, other informalities, you will see them. What that means is uh, as a country, we are unable to, to tap into broadening appropriately the revenue base for the treasury because the country is largely informal and it's, it's, it's a challenge to tax the informal sector. Yes, you can take some initiatives, but it's quite frankly, practically a challenge. Um, and so most of the revenue goes untaxed. And so that's when we go into processing, we are talking of um, being in a position where subsequently these processors, whether you start as purely an individual not incorporated, we will, we will try to move you um, to the other side where you formalize. Okay, that's, that, that's very important for us. The, the, Well, the, yeah, it looks like the connection there is uh, tripping a little bit. Anyways, um, so in the chat, I've put the request for painters there. If uh, she's a five Hey, Doc, yeah, go ahead. We, we lost you for a little bit. Oh, I think we lost him altogether. Yeah. Maybe going off video could help, Msonda. For for all of us? No, actually, it was my it was my connectivity issue. Um. Uh, nothing else, just my connectivity issue. Okay. Um, can, you, can, but can you hear me? Yes, we can hear, yes. Okay. Um, so the next, the next part, I'll try to just uh, glide through these. The marketeer booster loan. Marketeer booster loan is really intended to appreciate the role marketeers play in our economy. The structure of our economy is such that on one side, you have um, producers or suppliers 
Then on the other side, we have the consumers. Uh, if you were to, for example, I suppose you are all still very familiar with, our, with the structure of our economy. And supposing we take out Soweto market and all the other markets in the country, um, you, you then can realize the gap that would be created. Um, that's the role the marketeers play. They are uh, the go-between agents, uh, between the suppliers or producers and the consumers. But they have not been well attended. I mean, look, as the economy grows, as the economy transitions to um, being developed, this, the, the, the role of marketeers as individuals begins to relatively decline because of the formal structures that get established for trading. So what we have decided to do is to appreciate the role they play and help them to quickly uh, uh, you know, do their business in a manner that is appropriate, efficient. Um, they need funding to be able to do their orders um, and, and trade accordingly. So we give them loans, maximum 5,000. These are micro loans, interest-free and um, you know, running for six months. So it could be between 500 kwacha to 5,000 kwacha. That's a lot of money for a marketeer. Um, and that, that means a lot in terms of them being in a position to make orders um, you know, and, and proceed with their, their business. We have so far funded 33,000 marketeers and um, to the tune already of uh, around uh, 33 million kwacha. We are yet to fund about 45,000 and uh, we have put aside 171.5 million kwacha uh, just for marketeers. Last year alone, we had 350, 365.7 million kwacha that was put aside for the products that were advertised. So this is, this is the, the, the product. Then we have, again, under marketeer booster, we have the one that pertains to um, enhancing their storage facilities enhancing their cold storage facilities. And, and actually, we think marketeers at the level of cooperatives, they should be able to engage in processing. They can process and package vegetables uh, very appropriately, uh, you know, to that very, very appropriate level of quality. Um, if only they can be empowered with the, the right technology or appropriate technology, they can engage in that. And, they, and then they could, they could run the business nicely. So our assumption is that as we go, we will, you know, down the line, the, the, the role marketeers play in this intermediary uh, section of um, the value chain would, would also somewhat transition, uh, especially if we organize them into cooperatives, then they will belong to formal structures, and they will become marketeer agents of their own cooperatives. They will be trading, uh, getting supplies from their cooperatives, and then, uh, you know, sell, which is, which is fantastic. In the long term, marketeers will also belong to formal structures uh, of businesses. This one, the, the, high, the highest they can borrow, the threshold is 500,000. 12% uh, interest and a five-year loan tenure. Now, this is an interesting product because this also works as a game changer. The marketeers would be able to bring out products that can even sell in, in uh, chain shops, like chain stores like uh, ShopRite uh, and others, um, you know, at that level. Then we have um, the... The, the rather let me just just to emphasize the 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 aspect of marketeers um, relating to the types of activities that they can do when you talk of processing uh, we talk of bulking they could bulk carpenter they could bulk beans they could bulk dry fish they could bulk cassava what we are trying to create is bringing sanity at that level hygiene and uh, and also ensuring appropriate um, shelf life for these products in terms of cold storage facilities, 
uh, and for cold storage facilities, they can use uh, even solar. So we leave it for them to think about how that could be configured. Um, and the details also would follow. But to just ensure that we achieve what we are looking for, we subject them also to capacitation. Uh, we need, we don't assume they understand even the basics of business management. So we introduce them to business management, just the basics, record keeping, just being able to, to spot opportunities and also to, to, to be able to run the business appropriately. Who knows, you know, out of some of these marketeers, we expect that some could actually run um, into big businesses. Uh, you never know how things start. Um, and But once they are capacitated, they could be in a position to actually achieve something bigger and better. Um, so uh, that's, that's about the bulking cold storage facilities and the uh, processing facilities. Um, the other product is the, um, let me go to this one. The, I'm trying to skip some things so that we, we, we move, we move fast. I'm sorry. Um, this one helps us to uh, just look at what we would like to have short term financing in terms of um, trade finance or working capital requirement. That's another product, short-term finance, which comes in the form of trade finance or working capital requirement. Here's how this works. Um, it could be, say for instance, um, uh, targeted citizen A wants to um, move goods from Zambia to Congo Diara, um, and they have found a buyer there, but this guy doesn't have money to deliver their product or goods. They can come to CEEC. All we would request if they have a purchase order is that um, we, can, we, can, we, can we have that so that we can confirm, validate. Then we go into a tripartite arrangement where this targeted citizen plus the one who will receive the goods, who will then make the payment, we go into a tripartite arrangement that when the payment is made to this targeted citizen, it instead comes to CEEC. CEEC gets its loan back and we pay the targeted citizen the balance, which basically will be their net gain uh, or their profit. Clean sheet, no hassle. Um, if, for instance, maybe one just wants to um, um, they have their farmers, they have put up a crop and it's at the level where they have to apply top dressing fertilizer. They have run out of cash. They can still come to CEEC, ask for um, trade financing or working capital requirement. We can pay them. We, we can process working capital requirement for them. All we need to do is to go onto their farm and, and uh, zone in on their crop. We will ensure the crop to, to, to de-risk it. And then we will ensure that uh, everything is, is run appropriately. When, when the crop matures and it's now to be sold and they have sold, they can make the payment to us. But what we can do also with that arrangement Sometimes, depending on the situation, we could also ask for um, security, um, even title uh, deed for their farm or movables. For movables, we can even go for movable, movable live assets like cattle. We can, but if we are to go for cattle, we'll also ensure that that is subjected to de-risking measures. Um, against disease, um, sickness, against death or theft. Uh, you know, those are some of the risk measures we take for, for movable live assets. Uh, this one, the threshold, three million. This, is, this seems to be very attra attractive for many Zambians. And it, it, it's also one appropriate game changer. Many Zambians did not really have um, affordable 
and accessible sources for working capital. Um, and, and not everyone is looking for long-term finance. There are people who are just looking for short-term finance, 12 months max, and then they are, they are able to repay as quickly as possible. Um, the next one is aquaculture. For this product, what we would like to do is to have a deliberate focus. We know for a fact provinces like Luapula, um, Northern and, and Southern, they have um, this huge potential arising from the water bodies they have. I mean, you talk of Kariba Dam in Southern province. Uh, Wapula province is full of lakes and rivers. Um, these uh, deep water bodies can actually, you know, with, with the appropriate depth to hold a cage, we would like to use them for cage farming. Now, why are we focusing just on cage farming and not uh, ponds? The, the, the reason is simple. If we are to, I think at the moment we are sitting somewhere around the, could be around in, in the upwards of 70,000 metric tons gap, supply gap uh, for fish. Um, so we are in a hurry as, a, as an economy to, to close that gap. And the easiest would be to go for cage fishing. Cages hold more fish, uh, easy to, to, to manage and also with very little maintenance cost. Um, you know, and, 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 and so we, we have primarily targeted Wapula, Northern, Southern province, and also any other, by the way, any other areas where uh, this kind of activity could be done. But this also includes um, the, the backward linkages that may need to be established in terms of um, um, a fish feed, as well as um, um, fingerlings. We, we, we have another product under the uh, African Development Bank funded aquaculture seed fund. They are also into this, but we're trying to supplement. So with that, we can still fund ponds uh, as well as cages. This product is specifically trying to fast track um, uh, fish production from a kg point of view. What you have here, uh, what you are seeing here indicated 180,000 kwacha. This is the funding that would go for um, a, you know, a, a farmer who would like to have one kg, which, some, which is somewhat around, um, I think it's around um, 85,000 kwacha, 85 to 90,000 kwacha construction cost uh, to fabricate, uh, the kg and then you have um, the rest uh, as working capital requirement for feed uh, fingerlings um, and other attendant attendant requirements agricultural mechanization the, the focus here is to ensure that our farmers do not just produce during the rain season but that they actually take farming seriously as a business they go full throttle into farming and, and they're busy throughout the year, 12 months. Uh, we think this would be another interesting game changer because if, if, we, if we can go into um, agricultural production throughout the year, even, even the currently uh, farmed land would give us much, much more, more than double, um, uh, you know, in terms of product productivity, that would more than double. So we are talking of agricultural implements or equipment, as well as um, including irrigation, setting up irrigation system. Um, this for us is very important because of our natural endowment. And we think we can really run with this very successfully. And when once we increase on this in terms of production, then we are also, we are sure that we will have a lot to process. We have signed an MOU with Saro Agro, which is one of the key suppliers of agricultural um, machinery. We are yet also to sign uh, MOUs with others, including Camco. Camco is, um, is a supplier of 
agricultural equipment uh, from China. And, and we, we just think we need to bring them on board, all the local suppliers, and ensure that um, we have a very good relationship with them. Then we have another product, construction and infrastructure. Uh, you can talk of roadways, real estate, uh, construction of schools and health facilities, and several other things that uh, can actually uh, be done out of this. Uh, we believe Zambians um, should be in this and, and we will fund them uh, for their construction machinery uh, requirements. We will fund them for a number of things, including working capital that they might need to ensure that this is actualized uh, in that respect. The energy product is another interesting outfit. We, this one, we are looking at it both, both from the production or supply point of view, as well as from the side of um, consumer. Uh, production, meaning you can go into um, a provision of energy, uh, be it uh, using solar uh, or other innovative um, sources. And then you can also um, look at it from the consumer point of view, where perhaps you are just a farmer and you want to take care of your crop nicely, you are irrigating your crop. And currently we are we are really terribly done with the um, load shedding. So we have put this product to help the targeted citizens and entities to be in a position to procure um, gensets, for instance, uh, and, and, uh, and, and maybe provide even or access solar solutions for their um, facilities. But we are encouraging innovative solutions to help us uh, limit or minimize the energy gap that our country is currently facing. You know, it could be blending of ethanol with petrol or biofuel um, in any other uh, uh, source. Again, the maximum threshold is 3 million. If I may just say this, that when we talk of maximum 3 million, this is not really uh, what we can fund, this is to the level that management can approve. Beyond this, uh, if management feels this is something that can fly, then we will take it to the board for approval. Uh, so the board can approve much more than uh, to the higher thresholds beyond what management can approve. The idea is to limit what management can play with. You know, we can't just, uh, you know, management shouldn't have the a blank check, um, you know, with these things. You know, what CEC does has two legs. We have the economic leg as well as the political leg. So we have to be very uh, much in tandem uh, with what needs to be done in line with government aspirations vis-a-vis uh, -vis the eighth national development plan. We have introduced another product. We are focusing on fresh graduates. We believe it's important that our graduates, those that would like to run businesses, those that want to create ventures, they need to be helped. Um, so we will, we will run with it very, very effectively. We also would like to partner with the universities. Currently we have an MOU with the University of Zambia. We would like, we would like to also participate at other levels, for example, uh, sponsoring um, business plan development competitions, um, creation of um, innovative ventures. Uh, so we will, we will support uh, innovative business opportunities that must be funded. And so we'll, we'll give them that kind of funding uh, just to help them run through. So um, here we are looking at fresh graduates, not more than two years from college or university. And, and, and even those that are still, uh, uh, let's say, finalists, uh, and provided they have an inclination to run business, we will support them in that venture. We believe this will be an opportunity, uh, a gateway for our young people to that early already feel the need or actualize their desire to become entrepreneurs. Then we have livestock outgrower product. This is another interesting one. And, um, and so we, we're looking at uh, beef, dairy, 
goats and sheep. And by the way, even milk from goats, uh, we need to introduce this in Zambia. Um, I, I am beginning to learn that um, I, um, milk from goats is the closest. Um, that's what I have been taught. It's the closest to human milk. So uh, it's it's quite quite good, quite great. But you know, in Zambia, we are not used to some of these things. If if uh, I'm sure, if you if you see me um, uh, drinking goat milk, um, you know, in Zambia, some people will even laugh at you, uh, and and they think you are. I think there is some connotation that uh, maybe you you don't have much uh, money. And that, that's the problem we have. But actually, goat milk is, is a super product. Uh, we, we can have cheese uh, from, from this and so on and so forth. And we could have um, a market niche. Uh, it could even be for export uh, and, and, other, and other markets. Here, the threshold, we think if one is given 1 million, that might be sufficient. Well. Maybe not necessarily sufficient, but it, it's um, big enough to help someone get jump started and do something appropriate in that respect. So we will, we will. Here is what we are trying to do also out of this: is to improve appropriate genetics uh, in terms of livestock. If you go to some places in Zambia, when you look at the animals there, particularly uh, cattle, they are small and they don't grow fast. Even if you feed it a lot, it doesn't grow fast. So what we're trying to do is to introduce good genetics uh, that will, if it's for beef, it must grow uh, quickly. Uh, I think it's an issue of food convention ratio. Um, you know, that mass that we would like to have for commercial purposes. Um, if it's a dairy, we need the genetics that will help us to achieve the levels of um, a lot of milk. And, 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 and if it's a goat for beef, we also are looking for those relatively uh, big bodied uh, creatures um, so that we have, we have good business out of that. So this one will, will really bring in uh, a number of players and it, that's the livestock. Uh, it, will in, it involves fisheries and livestock, uh, the Ministry of Fisheries and Livestock, um, it involves also business service providers. It involves, um, you know, aggregation of livestock. Uh, it involves also uh, certification uh, in terms of uh, ensuring that we have the genetics we are looking for, pure breeds, pedigree. That's what we would like to have. So for this product, in fact, in some instances, we may have to look outside our borders. Uh, you know, to, to ensure that we have the appropriate genetics we are looking for, um, you know, and then we will fund individuals, um, the number of cows that they need, as well as bull, and then we also, we will take on board artificial insemination in some instances, just to ensure that we fast track uh, all this to the levels that will help us to, to reap the benefits as quickly as possible. Um, then we have the transport product for taxis, minibuses, and also light trucks, not exceeding five tons. Uh, we think we should be relevant uh, both in the rural and urban areas. Um, while taxis make a lot of sense in the urban areas as well as minibuses, in the rural areas, I know where I come from, uh, there were many, many instances, in fact, when we used to use trucks as transport. And, and, and unfortunately, that is still the case in some of our rural areas. So we also bring that on board and would like to also attend to their needs. You may have heard or read, I think it's just a few, um, is it a week or so ago, uh, our minister responsible for transport was talking about uh, us as a country taking care of the transport needs. Our minibuses, most of our minibuses, especially the 16-seater, even the ones that you can see in this picture, the 16-seater, they in fact were not meant for passenger, uh, you know, transport, you know. They, they are kind of um, 
reconfigured, recon, you know, they are converted into this kind of thing. So uh, when you sit in these buses, um, if you have you ever used them, you know what I'm talking about. I believe you have used these kinds of things before, and um, they are not really meant for passenger. Uh, so we need to have minibuses that that help us to achieve some of these national aspirations. So we think as CEC, we, we have an opportunity to contribute in a small way, obviously, uh, to achieving that aspiration. This one, um, we have simplified it. What we would like to do, um, some of the individuals may not need to incorporate, quite frankly. Here is the taxi driver that just wants to have a taxi. Um, we don't need to have them register with PACRA to begin with. That would be a tow order, such an individual. Just like uh, you have a guy who is in Shangombo or one of these outskirts places, and they want to get three, four, five goats, and you want them to register with PACRA. We are saying no to that. We can still fund them and still ensure that they run successfully. At some point in future, should they feel the need, if their business grows, they may register to operate formally. So we're trying to simplify um, you know, issues in that respect. Mining, that's another product. You also may have read or heard um, a number of issues around small scale mining. A, a lot of accidents and deaths, um, poor outfits or facilities in terms of equipment that they use. Uh, you know, some uh, they're busy uh, digging. They don't know how far they have gone. The next moment they are buried. And, and, and so we feel a CEC, we have an opportunity we could move in here and, and fund our SMEs with, with um, access to appropriate equipment and, and, and also working capital requirements for whatever they might need to, to do to run their businesses properly. This one has a threshold of 3 million um, and, and, and the rest remains, remains the same. But we, we are excited uh, you know, with this product because we believe the small scale mining in Zambia should be prioritized. We want this to be the gateway into large scale mining for, for our targeted citizens. Um, and eventually uh, we actually feel we should begin as a country to be deliberate and strategic, to have this upward movement, ensuring that our citizens participate even in large scale mining. <laughs> These are our resources. 60 years after independence, we are still highly dependent on foreigners to do these things. Um, like I say, it's only that I think sometimes as a people, we don't get embarrassed. Um, I, for me, these are some of the things that really should make us get embarrassed. Um, and, you know, but for some reason we are Zambians and we move just like that. Tourism is another product. Um, here, in the, in the, in the strategy, the, rather the eighth national development plan. Um, tourism is given a very strategic uh, thrust. We believe as CEEC, we can also ride along uh, on that and ensure that uh, targeted citizens are able to, to do a number of things, um, establish appropriate facilities, refurbish their facilities, um, you know, whether it means a completely or complete overhaul of their fixtures and fittings to bring them to uh, appropriate standards and, and ensure that, um, you know, we are aligned in terms of our strategic aspirations as a country. So we fund them different things. Maybe you want to do urban tourism, we will, we will bring it in. Perhaps it's cultural tourism. Just want to take foreigners who come into our country, tourists uh, is specific. They want, they want to, you want to, sub, to help them um, experience different cultural environments. Um, you, you package your products very appropriately. Uh, you take them from one place to another. All urban tourism. Zambia has places that some people who visit us, they have never seen, even here in Lusaka. Um, we can have um, local, urban tourists, tourism uh, facilities that take tourists from one corner to the other of the town and help to explain, uh, you know, what, you know, could be hard for them uh, within our environments. And so that is a package that we have for tourism. 
uh, we want to go into all aspects, um, including those that have to do with the uh, going into uh, canoeing, game ranching, you know, game drive, so, so to speak, and, and nature walks and um, the likes of bungee jumping uh, for those that uh, want to experience things and they have plenty of adrenaline uh, to push them up and down. Um, then we have the annual uh, micro, small, and medium enterprise presidential award. We think just to motivate our entrepreneurs or our SMEs, we need to give them this carrot. This is not, this is not a loan product. This is a grant. It's an award that they receive. Just an award. It's not a loan. But we believe that um, those that meet the aspirations of the government in terms of wealth creation, job creation, uh, improvement um, uh, from a perspective of performance, uh, profitability, uh, and, and other dimensions, innovation, they need to be rewarded. So there's nothing better than shaking hands with the president, not for political reasons, but actually uh, because of your contribution uh, in terms of the national agenda. And we think this is, this, is, this is also a game changer in that respect. People will every year be um, looking forward to this very competitive um, uh, facility. And hopefully uh, it will then be a catalyst for their desire to, to, to um, enhance their performance. So this is, this is really what I thought I could share with you from a product point of view. But having said this, um, I thought I could also take advantage of um, this opportunity. Uh, most of you, uh, if not all, um, you are outside the country. And, and obviously you, you, you do have interests in what's going on in our country. That's an opportunity that you have. You can actually partner with the locals uh, to go into some outfit, a venture that you could propose. You can bring some funds on board and we can also fund the locals from CEC. You do also qualify, by the way, to get funding from CEC. Or you could, you could source for funds from where you are. And then you augment that with funds from CEC uh, to upscale. Um, you could also take in, you know, another dimension you could bring on board a foreigner from where you are and, and already uh, you know, come up with some outfit, a venture that you think could be had right here on our soil. And, and you could structure it where you are and, and, and you could then facilitate to bring in capital into our country and into your venture. And you can, you can then help to bring back home um, innovation, appropriate innovation, appropriate technology, as well as cash, uh, because that then translates into um, a, an outfit pertaining to FDIs, as well as um, your um, uh, transfer of uh, you know, cash back home. So there are a number of things that we could actually do. And, and here's the other thing that we can do. CEC can also go into equity. Uh, in fact, um, we can, we can uh, currently, we have one venture where we have equity, that's um, the Mumba Ginari. Uh, sad to say, it's not a good example because at the moment, I think it's not even operational. Uh, it went into a number of, of um, challenges, um, but we are trying to fix that. Um, but you could actually, identify um, um, interests from foreigners to invest in such a facility. And you could as well come on board. Uh, you could buy uh, debt uh, you know, from the same venture and that becomes your equity. And th there are so many things that we could do. So CEC goes into joint ventures or encourages joint ventures between Zambians, uh, those leading here, and those abroad, joint ventures between Zambians and foreigners. 
uh, we also encourage uh, we we go into joint ventures um we can go into equity partnership as a commission and those that we fund for example anything that we fund uh, to the tune of let's say now 3 million a and we we look at the project we we see some gap and we think the project is viable in other words the project will attract interest but maybe the promoters do not have what it takes to succeed uh, in the interim we would have management interest uh, where we we kind of entrench in the business stock gap measures uh, to bring on board financial prudency as well as uh, management uh, to ensure that it succeeds then eventually um, we will work ourselves out of the business maybe uh, offload that equity to um, Zambians uh, or even uh, established entities so I think you have an opportunity actually uh, and I would encourage you to to look this way as well there's a lot that you could have um, even just coming on board we are not looking for I should say this also as I end um, we are not looking for um, uh, and, 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 and I shouldn't I shouldn't really miss we we are not looking for we're not focusing on on um, um, collateral we have debunked that we are looking for viability if if, if the business is viable we will, we will we will take measures to support it uh, you know so in other words we are not so much interested in what would be from economics we say collateral is not the necessary and the condition necessary and the sufficient condition um you can have your collateral but your venture is not viable so we will not take it uh, what we have also realized is that there are many zambians that don't have houses they don't have land they don't even have movable assets so if we subject them to the collateral requirement, then they are technically excluded. So what we need to do now is to come up with the de-risking measures, uh, which we have done so far, um, to ensure that um, you know we can still fund such ventures and ensure that they succeed. So you might be sitting there, you 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 know in that place where you are. Should I call uh, strange land? Um, and and, and 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 you think of a venture that you 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 must run for in your country from where you sit we believe you have a lot of um advantage because of your exposure and your um experiential knowledge which we would like to tap you know back home so we, we will not be looking for collateral from you We'll be looking for your uh, capacity that you can run a successful venture. I think we must move towards a platform as a country where you can walk into the bank, you can walk into CEC, and we talk about business, and we have nothing to say about collateral, and and then we come up with uh, measures to ensure that we de-risk, we minimize the risk of that venture and uh, we, we hedge it around uh, to succeed. Uh, so we have, we have partnered with uh, uh, business development service providers for handholding initiatives and capacitation initiatives. We have uh, partnered with the suppliers. We have partners with banks. Uh, you know, this is another interesting thing you may, you may want to hear. Uh, there are banks that have believed in us and they have already planned to reduce interest rate to 18% for, for the project that would be riding on the CEEC platform. So that which we can't fund, then we share with these um, banks. The banks can fund you even you know, in the upwards of 10 million, 20 million or whatever. You know? um, so, and I think you are well positioned to actually ride on this. Uh, you know, so we, we have some outfits actually that we can, for me, I think these are interesting, but we are looking for people that uh, have um, business opportunities that they require funding. And, and 
you are the people. Uh, you know, that can help us to quickly mobilize uh, resource that we need, as well as um, implementation to fast track socioeconomic development for, for our country. Let me, let me pause here. Let me end here and, and receive from you now. Thank you so much. Well, Doc, uh, thank you so much for, for this presentation. It, uh, you covered a lot of uh, ground there. And uh, we really appreciate uh, your time and your expertise and uh, you know, all the tips that you've given us. Um, and you've rightly noted that uh, we are all very varied in terms of our interests with CEC. Um, so with that, I'm going to ask our members to ask you some questions. There's already one question in the chat from uh, my good friend, uh, Onwa Dlumbamba. He's saying that, uh, Doc, there's something about skills which you didn't touch on. So um, uh, I don't know uh, what you're trying to express, but uh, maybe you should uh, be more specific what you want to do, what you want to ask. Uh, thank you, Doc. Um, I, I wanted, I saw something, and I think from the content where he, uh, it's, it's mentioning something to do with skills. And I wanted to know because there are people who have the natural skill um and then how uh, they don't have papers but they have that nature they the gifted hands uh, and i saw it somewhere uh, talking about skills so he didn't touch it uh, i i thought maybe in that way okay okay Th thank you thank you so much um we, 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 we take that on board, yes, but obviously it would come in varied perspectives. Um, one of our mandates, uh, you know, in terms of the pillars, as the pillars, the empowerment pillars is captured in the, in the act, the CEE act. Um, what is included there is skills development, entrepreneurship development and skills development. We, we, we are mandated to also enhance work culture. You know, those are attitudinal issues, uh, not of our employees as such, but actually of the country. Um, but specifically what we're saying, there are skills embedded in our people uh, in terms of the knowledge they have pertaining to their environments. If they want to exploit that, for business purposes, we would fund such a venture. Uh, the bottom line really, um, they are, it must have uh, business, it must make business sense. And then we, we, we would fund. Anything that we feel um, uh, can lead to exploiting what we have as a resource, which can bring money, we can fund that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Doc. Um, we have a series of questions here. The next ones are coming from uh, Dr. Mukamba. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Good afternoon, Dr. Mungle. Your Good afternoon, Doc. Is, <coughs> is quite wide discovery, but I'm a medical doctor. And I heard you mention words like uh, de risking, and you talked about uh, the business aspects of de risking, but you did not think about the, the lifespan and the factor and uh, the value of a healthy population that will be your customer to ensure that your products <clears throat> are, are, are carried on for a longer period. And with that said, I'm thinking of it from two points of view. The primary care centers in remote areas where we don't have health facilities, which can be run as viable businesses, but in addition, offer the, what I would call the risk on your other customers. Secondly, we also, this country needs uh, proper private uh, specialized services, particularly in diagnostics, which tend to be a bit expensive to incur. But if run privately with NEMA coming on board for both aspects, 
would offer a very good viable options, but then require quite a bit of investment to start or to undertake. I don't know whether you have thought of incorporating that or that would be a welcome idea. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I, I was not um, quite clear with the second part. Um, of, well, the second of, part is where, for instance, if the government is offering specialized uh, services right now, like uh, CT scanners. Let me be more precise. A bit expensive to get, but and they cannot obviously cover the whole nation. But if given to private hands, specialized hands, <laughs> could have those services quite effectively in the private sector. And we, as it is, we have NEMA, which is already helping funding these ventures. So, but then I'm, I'm a specialist in, in the clinical imaging. But to start something like that, the capital to require for me to start a venture like that is, might be beyond my, my means. I was wondering, are you thinking of finding something in that, in that line? Brilliant. Thank you. Very interesting question. Um, and, and you just helped me to say something that um, I would have overlooked. Um, a, on our loan product bouquet, we, we also have what we are calling unsolicited window for applications. We, we don't believe we are, we are the, the, the preserve of knowledge or wisdom. We, we think there are many Zambians out there that have um, other um, appropriate dimensions that need to be addressed as we try to implement different things pertaining to actualizing the eighth national development plan. So we leave a window where we receive unsolicited applications. And the dog, that's your window. That's your window. Uh, when you talk of um, uh, just the illustration you have given, that's something that you could actually do. You could, you could establish some diagnostic center of some kind from a medical point of view. And, and we can find that. You see, provided it's making everything that we do, we look at, at it from a business point of view. It is an economic empowerment initiative in the medical sector, but it must have the element of you being able to make money to run that business successfully. It's a medical uh, business. Um, you, you should be able then to show that this could be sustainable uh, and surely it should be sustainable. And so we can fund it. I would even encourage you to, to think along those lines. And like I mentioned, some of these uh, projects could actually be fast winners in terms of uh, return on investment. You, you can also then think of riding on the platform I talked about uh, of accessing the 18% uh, financing if you are looking of really putting up something very appropriate, Zambia should have um, diagnostic centers that can compete with those in South Africa, uh, you know, for certain uh, specialized attention. There is no reason we, we shouldn't have those in our country. The only challenge, I think it's uh, the, the capital requirement, but we are trying to open opportunities in that respect. And I think it can be it can be done. So the de-risking aspects in terms of from a health or, or yeah life point of view, we we do take um, uh, one uh, one element we we take into account is key man insurance. We would we would insure the key promoter of the business uh, in the event of death so that we don't lose the money. Um, we also take into account other other measures, some of which I need not discuss here, uh, you know, because of the moral hazards, you know, those those aspects. Um, our our strategy is to achieve two things. Oh no! Please come back. No, while the doc is reconnecting there, uh, Manga, you'll be next after this. As soon as okay, can. thanks, Lusa. Yeah. Thanks. 
And I was just getting excited. You know, this, this is very interesting discussion. Very, very, very interesting. Everything we are doing. And number one, reduce the cost. Um, uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, no worries, I, no worries. Were you done I, with... Uh... I got kicked out. I was, just, I was just explaining that we also... The second leg that we pursue is minimizing failure rate of the funded enterprises. That is what will help us to grow the economy. The first part, de-risking the fund, helps us to keep having this money, to keep funding. The second part, de you know, minimizing failure rate, helps us to achieve the government agenda of fast-tracking economic development. Thank you. Perfect. Um, Mayenga, you have two questions. Okay, thank you very much. I hope uh, you can hear me, Dr. Mungule. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. So I, I just some clarifications. I may have missed uh, some things in your presentation and I hope you will share the presentation because I, it, was, it was really, really good. Um, so number one, do you finance startups? Yes. Yes, we do. Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, Mainga is gone now. Where is Mainga? <laughs> Mainga. Give him a hard time. He's going to come back. He's a startup. He has gone. <laughs> 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 yes, yes, we do. We That's fund the okay. startups. I think we can okay. move on to the next question. Next uh, question is, uh, yeah, Honorable uh, Stephen Shanga. <laughs> yeah, Steve, go ahead, man. Do we still have uh, Honorable Mshanga here? What's okay. happening with you people in Zambia? Huh? <laughs> okay, after him, we had uh, Medarigo. Uh, uh, oh, my is back. My is, is back. This is my. Uh, my Manga, your, your connection is really, really bad. Yeah, I can't get him either. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Stephen Shanga has uh, taken off. Uh, so we're going to have uh, Medarido ask you a question. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, thank you, Doctor. I've got uh, two questions. Firstly, do, we, do you have on the platform of agriculture, I'm a farmer, tailor-made loans to meet repayments when I get paid? as a farmer? Very good question. Yes, we do. Uh, for farming enterprises, we could actually receive a loan repayment uh, in form of bullet payments. Uh, it doesn't have to be annual, I mean monthly. We can agree that uh, looking at your venture, uh, maybe instead of making 12 payments in a month, I mean in a year, yeah. You could just make maybe two payments or one payment, you know, bullet payments, um, you know, taking into account the nature of your cash flow. Thank, uh, thank you, Doctor. The next one is uh, what you have presented is a very beautiful financing arrangement in Zambia. Now, with financing, there's also goals that uh, there's some debt that will not be repaid and uh, I would like to know, just for the future of CEEC, what measures you have put in place for uh, recovering money from debtors that are not paying, so that there is continuity for years on CEEC part. Thank you. Interesting question. That's that's part of our strategy, um, and the, that's part of our de-risking initiatives that we have taken into into 
you know, uh, account. One of the things that we do is to ensure that we, we handhold all funded clients. We handhold them, uh, you know, by way of ensuring that uh, we give them um, business uh, and entrepreneurship or entrepreneurial skills. Uh, we, we also help them to actually um, not run into default uh, by ensuring that uh, we do regular monitoring and evaluation of all these ventures. Now, uh, uh, historically, we have been having challenges to even conduct M and E. Um, you may wish to know, particularly last year was really bad. Uh, we were operating to some extent, we were almost getting somewhere down to about 40% staffing levels. No directors. I only had one director and that was director legal. Uh, no um, senior management team. In other words, I had to interface. Uh, in one instance, I'm the director general. In the other instance, I'm some manager, I'm some director. Um, you know, so that kind of a situation, you know, where I found myself moving largely down to operational levels and not the strategic uh, perspective, uh, giving appropriate direction. But I'm glad that that is changing now. We have we have we have employed staff. Uh, the directors are onboarded and senior management cadre. I can say we have uh, we 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 will run this year most appropriately from that um, HR perspective. Um, some of you may we, or may already know uh, in terms of um, operational efficiency, also the fleet of vehicles that we have. Um, you know, those, these vehicles, most of them, well, almost all of them were bought in 2008. That's when the commission, uh, you know, was, you know, um, you know, established. And obviously they are way beyond their um, appropriate life. They are in fact a danger on the road uh, and to the users, uh, you know, themselves. So, and so we have that inadequacy. We hope that will be addressed quickly this year and just in terms of office tools, uh, we will address that this year, um, hopefully. That, I'm saying this to say, when we talk of loan recovery, uh, it is impacted upon by a number of factors. It's both ways, the client, as well as the commission, in terms of uh, what we do. There are some clients that are self-starters, it's not so much of a problem, but everyone, that we fund, we want to subject them to handholding initiatives or measures. We have signed MOUs, for example, with the Musica. Musica are willing to ride on CEC platform and provide a number of mitigation measures uh, aimed at handholding our clients for success. And and also we have we have employed even at provincial uh, level, we do have offices. In, in the provinces, uh, that is another dimension that will really help us. So we have taken on board quite a 360 degree approach to ensure that we enhance our operational efficiency and deliver on time. Thank you. Well, thank you so thank much. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Professor. Yeah, thank you, Madari. That's a good question. Um, so next in line is Ivy, then uh, Dr. Saili, and then Moses. And uh, in the chats, um, People that bounced off, like Mainga, came back and asked his questions in the chat, and so did uh, Honorable Stephen Mshanga. So maybe you could go to Ivy first, and then we'll go into the chat. Thank you, um, Sonda, for taking my question. And thank you, <coughs> Dr. Mongolo. Very, very informative uh, discussion and presentation. Um, <clears throat> my question is uh, relating to uh, participation. So if somebody is applying either as an individual or they already are applying as a farm or what, whatever other outfit they're in, and then they're also part of a cooperative. <laughs> would, if those two institutions, organizations applied at the same time with one of the, um, what I would say promoters or members um, represented, would that dis disadvantage one of the organizations? For instance, I apply as a farm and then we apply as a cooperative. My cooperative is disadvantaged because I'm in both. Is that, um, would that be taken into account? Then my other question I think was relating to the interest. So that was already answered. I'll take it back. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I, uh, good question, really. Um, no, it would not, um, you know, uh, uh, disadvantage you. Um, because those are two different uh, entities owned by two different uh, uh, groupings. Um, but you, you helped me to say something that I, I had overlooked. Um, we do have two types of financing, project finance and short-term finance. Um, one can apply for project finance um, and at the same time, within while your project finance loan, which is long-term loan uh, running for five years, while that loan is still running, you could actually still apply for trade finance, which is short-term finance for working capital injection, or maybe it's to do with the, um, uh, you want to consummate some um, purchase order that you want to, to have. So that, that but, you cannot apply for pro another project finance, which is long-term finance, if your long-term loan is still running. Neither would you apply for trade finance if your trade finance loan is still running. I, I hope I hope that is that is clear. Uh, but in terms very of clear. You thank applying, you very much. Sorry. Great. That's fantastic. That's okay. Thank you so much, I thank you. Okay, okay. Um so Dr. Saidi, you had uh, a question in the chat and also raised your hand. So you could just, I guess, combine them. Uh, well, thank you very much. I had two questions in the chat, <clears throat> but one of them has already been answered. Um, the other one, the other one that has not been answered is uh, one on the product of uh, short-term financing. I just wanted to know how long it takes for you to process that because uh, in short-term financing, for instance, when you get an order, timing is time is very cardinal. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Mungule, did you uh, get that question? Hello, sorry, I, I, I didn't pick what what you were saying. Okay, uh, Dr. Saili, just repeat your question. Uh, I... Yeah, I was saying that, um, one of the products is short-term financing. So uh, uh, my concern is to find out um, how long it takes to process that. Because uh, short-term financing, especially when you get an order, time is of essence. So I wanted to find out how long it takes. Very good question. Um, I, I can tell you frankly, uh, for 2022, things have been horrible. Uh, the, the, the processing of applications is very slow uh, for the reasons I have you know, alluded to. Uh, going forward, we're trying to even entrench it in our service charter. Um, uh, an application must be processed within 14 days. Uh, that, that's a turnaround period that we are trying to indicate. We have stressed uh, Zambians for far too long. Uh, obviously, that might not be achievable just quite immediately uh, because people are still coming on board. But that's the assurance that I can give that, um, you know, going forward, every loan, uh, that is every loan application, we want to give it a turnaround period of not more than two weeks. That's sufficient time to look because what we ask people to submit, it's not a comprehensive business plan. It's a concept not. So it's not something that we should take a lot of time to process. We, we look at viability. That's a key uh, component. And then we once, if we, if we think this thing can fly, then we can go into asking you know, detailed questions, uh, but it shouldn't take more than that. Thank you. Okay. Um... Um, if I may, sorry, I'm sorry. If I may answer, there's another question uh, from, uh, what was it coming from? Somebody was asking for the 2022 applications. Yes. Um, yes, now that we have made a call for 2023, uh, what's going on with the 2022 applications? They are still active, they are still under consideration. Nothing has been uh, thrown away already. We haven't even written to anyone about rejection. 
Um, so we are processing those things so that we quickly, uh, you know, finalize everything. You know, we, we for 2022, we had a, funding gap of 9.8 billion kwacha, meaning if we are to fund what we consider viable, that's the shortfall. And that's, that's why we feel we need to interface with commercial banks. And I'm glad there are those that are willing to bring down their rates, you know, for the purposes of uh, actualizing government uh, initiative. Thank you. Okay. Um... So I think you answered uh, uh, Mushanga's question there, but Mainga had asked uh, another, did you have two, Stephen? Did you have another question? Because he answered your question about the 2022 applications. Yeah. Um, I asked for a turnaround for one application. Um, how long it takes? I said, That's that going forward, that will be not more than two weeks. Yeah, but um, I was looking at what's um, one of those applicants for 2022, which has taken seven months now. So that's why I'm yeah. trying to put it to, to, to the digital. Like, why are you taking seven months to process a, a application? So that's did, you say, did you say seven months? Yeah. Yes, from September. So how much is <laughs> five months? <laughs> 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 yeah, we 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 are, we actually are busy uh, running with that. We should yeah. we should um, within the course of next week, uh, most of the 2022 applications will also uh, be addressed. I'm not too sure. By now, either you have received a call from CEEC, uh, you know, regarding due diligence. If you haven't, then we can say, or oh, you have. Um, uh, you know, you're already lined up for consideration uh, because that is that is the beginning part. We want to conduct due diligence. Here's what we want to do. CEC in the provinces is only um, in the provincial capitals. So oh, as a country, so we, have, we, have, we have 116 uh, districts. Uh, we, we are not in all those districts. We are only in 10 districts. Uh, what we are trying to do is to interface with our ministry, the Ministry of Small and Medium Enterprise Development. They do have ground presence in all the 116 districts through their um, district cooperative officers. Those are the ones we think we can use. We have already uh, given them some training so that they can help us to do uh, quick due diligence for the projects in those districts. Uh, there was a question, can we fund startups? Yes, we can. Um, what happens then with due diligence? Oh, well, if, if a startup is purely on paper, there is nothing to go see on the ground. Uh, we just do a desk appraisal. Uh, so meaning we spend most of the time just to appreciate the configuration of what they are trying to do. And uh, if we think it can fly, then we'll fund it. We don't need to start wasting time going on the ground when there's nothing to see. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, Doc. Uh, Mainga had asked another question, but he, he broke off a little bit. So he was asking that, um, um, what are the minimum equity requirements from the sponsor for <laughs> slash max, max project participation that CEC can take? Interesting question. Um, it, 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 it will, a very good actually, very good question. It will depend on the configuration of the project. Okay. Um, it, it, let me just give scenarios. For example, we could have um, some FDI uh, component coming on board. We could have um, a Zandan um, based abroad coming on board with equity. And then we have um, CEEC coming on board. And we could have a Zambian also actually borrowing from commercial bank coming on board. Different configurations that um, uh, we, could, we could actually talk about. Um, the bottom line is that um, A, it's got to be based on the, what is considered viable, uh, you know, how we can structure it, because that is what then will attract uh, interest. Um, the interest of all the, uh, the equity holders will be on the basis of what is considered appropriate or viable. 
and, and it would attract different levels of um, participation. So I think the, the, th the fixing of um, equity participation uh, would, would always be based on, you know, project by project basis. Oh, fair enough. Um, Alex, uh, you, had the, you had the question, Willow. Dr. Fruits, you had the question for Dr. Mongole. It is connecting to audio. <clears throat> So, uh, Dr. Mugwe, while uh, Alex is connecting, on um, Honorable Mshanga's uh, question, um, if somebody doesn't hear from uh, the commission after a period of time, can they actually call and uh, find sure. out what the status is? Feel free to call. Uh, okay. You may just have been um, inadvertently uh, left out. Um, maybe the team forgot to... Um, uh, include you or the project was just missed and, and I think that's an important initiative from the applicant mm -hmm. uh, it, to keep us on our toys I mean we we need to deliver and and we get reminded uh, when when you you give us a shout you give us a call you you send us a text uh, we have to deliver and I think we'd, we wouldn't take that as bothering us but Hello? that is to to make us deliver Yes, uh, Alex, you, I see your background. Can you ask your question? Good afternoon. Yep. Hello. We can, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, you can hear me. Um, I, I'm, I've got interest from the aqua aquaculture. Uh, I heard the the speaker saying. Uh, they are not funding fish ponds. They are funding cages. Now, some of us, we have got the fish ponds already that have been lined up, that have been already prepared to take on fish. And we are some steps inside the, into the program of uh, fish farming. Now, to hear that uh, you are just interested in caging, it's very discouraging to some of us. I don't know what we are going to do with that because we really needed that uh, that e e e c e c e e c word funding. So does it mean that we should not apply because we have got fish ponds and uh, what we are to sponsoring our cages? Good question. Um, I, I did mention that um, we do have um, aquaculture seed fund under the African Development Bank initiative. Uh, in other words, government, they procure the loan, uh, you know, for aquaculture um, development, and that that loan is being discharged with the um, fund management uh, by by the commission, uh, with the involvement of um, Ministry of Fisheries and Livestock. That's a window that you can come through, and in fact, that one um, again, there is no closing date it's open. Uh, so with what you have indicated, just repackage your application and uh, send to CEEC, that will be considered. Um, we can fund uh, seed, feed, we can fund for pond construction, we can fund uh, for other accessories. Um, so you are covered. What we didn't want is to, to to go the same route, we wanted to have a deliberate focus um, in other areas, and, and and hence that that direction that we just want now with this fund to promote cages in those specific provinces. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, as, as we draw to a close, uh, thank you so much. A question. Yeah, thanks, Alex, for a good question. Uh, there was a question, Doc, in the chat about um, the contact information. Uh, for the commission. Uh, that is very clear. I think I've, uh, I've, I've, I've understood now. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I've understood. Um, but I'll have another question. 
<laughs> Later. Later. Right now. Okay. Can I ask you now? I ask your question now. We're almost done. Yes. Go yeah. ahead. Um, I also have my hand up for the second time. Yeah. Oh, okay. the, the other, anyway, some of the, one, the question has been somewhat answered already. But yeah, I just wanted um, a okay. I, I've been I've been in Botswana and I've seen how these empowerment programs work in that country. It has been, it is one of the easiest way. They have got one of the easiest way to actually get the funds and start the businesses. And the program has been going on very well. Now, um, in Zambia, we have got a lot of, uh, a lot of hardships. It's sometimes uh, you can even uh, lose your heart in the process of actually trying to access the funds. Uh, can you can you assure us <coughs> to say uh, the process has been shortened so that we can have the money as fast as possible to implement the pro development that we are put in place? Try us. Yeah, yeah, just try us. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Okay, um, after Alex, we had Ivy, uh, Ivy had the hand up, so please go ahead. Thank you. <clears throat> Dr. Mungule, you did mention that uh, the commission does sometimes take a, an equity position in a, in a project. So my question is sometimes these projects, maybe a bit of a preamble, these projects, it, they, they take some kind of a chicken and egg uh, position, right? Where you want to see something before you can say, yes, we can take an equity position. Would you be interested to give a letter of interest before the whole concept is fully conceptualized? And I'll, I'll make a comment a bit just so to give you a bit more, um, maybe peek in the bag. If there's a big project that other maybe foreign investors are interested in, and for you to line them up, they want to see that there is buy-in either with the government or with other funding institutions in the country, whether it's a bank or yourselves. So you get that interest for them to say, okay, maybe it's a, it's a, it's a serious project now we can commit. So would you be willing to give a letter of interest, non-committal, but letter of interest nonetheless? Yes, we would do that. Um, um, I think you're raising a very important uh, uh, question. The bottom line of what we're talking about here is, uh, enhancing uh, economic development of our, of our country. Uh, we will do whatever it takes. You know, some of, I, here's what I say to people, and, and I don't know if you believe in what I say. I'm saying, uh, I say the answers to our problems, they lie beyond the book. Uh, we need to configure solutions beyond the book. We all know, um, some of you, most of you are academicians and, and you are in academics, and, uh, the books are very much historical. So we need to see uh, what we, we can get our hands on to address the problems that are for this economic structure. Um, some of the solutions, um, they, you can't fix them from the book, uh, but you can fix them based on information we have, I mean, in terms of concepts and theories. And we can say, okay, I think for us, this is how it will work. So you are raising a very interesting issue uh, and we are willing to, to go that route. Um, the promoter basically, or the originator of the concept or the idea, the business uh, concept, will basically have um, more information in terms of um, what they think can work. And uh, once shared with other would-be partners, then maybe some more insights come uh, on board. But then as the idea gets accepted, uh, we also can then take a very active role uh, where we see, if we see, for instance, there's a financing gap that needs to be addressed beyond what CEC can bring on board, we actually can proactively run with you on such, such a venture to ensure that um, we, we package the financing appropriately. Thank you. Oh, Thank you very much. That was a great question. Um, so our, ne our next question is going to come from uh, Mr. Kazilimani. But before you come in, Jason, let me just ask 
what Mike put in the chat. Uh, Mike Momba is asking, is there funding for construction of flats with repayment based on rental income, collateral, collateral being another property? Yes. Okay. That's, that's under the construction and infrastructure loan product. Okay, so Mike- what, all, all, all we need to do is to structure the, the, the loan, taking into account that there is a construction period, yes. um, you know, uh, which, is, which is sunken cost. And then there, there comes another period when now repayment uh, would start coming. That's one aspect um, in the real estate uh, financing from CEC. The other aspect is where you, you construct to sell. Yeah, you, you can go into real estate. You know, your business is just to put up flats or whatever it is. Um, you just don't, you don't want to rent. You want to build to sell. Um, there are Zambians that would like to do those kinds of things. They are only lacking capital. We can fund that. Oh, wonderful. Um, Musunda, if you don't mind, let me just add in one real question, uh, really what he's saying. Dr. Mungul, does the interest accrue during, say, the construction period? Or is there, do you have a grace period? Uh, all our loans, the project finance loans, do have grace period. And, and, and the minimum uh, would be, uh, at the moment, is six months. Uh, but like I explained, we could have some of these loans are more appropriate for bullet payment. The, 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 the facility is such that it cannot sustain monthly payments. Uh, because of the, the, the way the, the cash flow, uh, you know, comes through. So yes, um, there's a grace period and we can structure grace period taking into account the, the not just the lifespan, but the, the, the money making potential of the business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Doc. Um, so Jason, did you have a question? I saw you put your hand down. I know it's, it's not a question as such, it's just, uh, just a comment, but I think we're about to wind up. Here, I'm, I'm just putting on my CEC chairman hat and just to uh, support. Uh, he started to say that, um, just support of him. Uh, and I've been listening to all the questions uh, and all the comments. I think it's quite clear that uh, uh, there's a lot that people don't really know about uh, what the CEC offers and where we're going. Uh, but I'll just encourage everyone to uh, please be as open as possible. If you are not clear about anything at CEC, the DG and his team are ready to um, uh, uh, take your comments and, uh, and suggestions on board. Uh, the thrust this year, ever since the DG came in, has been on innovation. That's why you've, you've seen this flurry of uh, new products uh, uh, during the calendar year 2022. Uh, we expect some more to be coming through. Uh, the DG now is uh, building up a team, so there'll be more, much more capacity. Uh, I think the common complaint has been um, the length of the application process or lack of uh, feedback when someone applies. I think someone talked about having applied a few months ago and uh, nothing has come through. So all the, those things hopefully will be a thing of the past with a built up capacity. But it's early days yet, there's still a lot to be done. Uh, but all I'd like to say is uh, please support the CEC. It's got a great mission, you know, it's uh, had a low profile, but uh, it really should have a higher profile society. Uh, it's got a big mandate. When you look at the CEC Act, there's much more that the CEC should be doing. So, but it's early days yet. So support, uh, criticize, give feedback and so on and help the DG succeed. Uh, if the CEC succeeds, uh, I think millions of Zambians will, will be happy to succeed as well. So that was just uh, a comment I wanted to make in support of the DG and DG, well done. I was listening in the background. Bye for now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I didn't know you were in. Um, I, I just wanted to interact with, uh, with these people. I appreciate uh, the sentiments from my chair. Thank you so much. Ooh, well, I, have, I have shared, I have shared with, with the group my, my contact. Um, uh, if you have some, if you want to have some high-level conversation, um, feel free. Uh, let let's engage. 
you are just the people. Uh, you might just be the people that we are looking for. Uh, you know, to, to give us those uh, um, uh, huge leaps, quantum leaps in terms of uh, economic activity, economic gearing, you might just be those that uh, we are looking for. Wonderful. Well, um, you know, uh, Doc, you've really been very uh, generous with your time and uh, expertise. Um, and the, the information you shared is really uh, of significance to a lot of people. Uh, so I hope that, uh, you know, our members here have, have taken a leap from uh, what you've shared and uh, will start approaching you uh, or the CEC uh, going forward. And being this, uh, I mean, this being January, a lot of people make resolutions and I'm sure one of them is, uh, I gotta go see the CEC this year, that's the resolution. So um, we've exhausted the questions and uh, uh, yeah, Ivy saying, uh, she's, you know, she's thanking you and saying uh, a great plug game, CEC and Zambia only succeed if us Zambians get into the game uh, seriously. So. Yeah, that's definitely a sentiment that a lot of us share, and uh, you are the conduit for us to succeed as a country. Um, Onward is saying uh, thank you, and uh, we'll chat up with you on uh, WhatsApp and uh, I guess other means. So um, unless there are any very, very last questions, I'd like us to let uh, Dr. Mungle go and uh, relax a little bit and uh, get on to do other things. Um, there's a question very quickly from can, Dr. Can, can, I, can, I, can I say something before the question comes through? Okay, sure. Um, maybe something that we have not really uh, packaged nicely. Okay. Um, the people in, in, in you people in diaspora, um, it, it, one aspect that could actually be interesting is if you could if you could rally around some commonality. Um, you know, so that you also pool uh, resources, and and you you already can construct some uh, big venture that could come with a lot of um, technical backup, a um, lot of capacity for innovation and creativity, um, and also with the, with with the, with capital input already on board. And and you can you can have such an outfit, and and you you may not you you don't need to be here, but you can then create such a, a structure, and you can have it right down here, and you you then just uh, sponsor um, management capacity, um, innovation uptake and linkages uh, networks uh, with the globe. And we can find such a thing, uh, and and you could you could hold your shareholding in your different respects. Um, I think we need to begin to to throw up for um, you know grab a number of interesting outfits. This is the opportunity that we have as citizens of this country. Uh, we would depend on ourselves to develop it to a very sustainable level. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you so much for that assurance, uh, Doc. Um, so Ivy, uh, that's uh, I guess uh, is asking us to do something together there, you know. So let's keep talking, um, Doctor Mukama. We, we really should, um, Sandra. We should, as Zambians, honestly, take it up. And I just want to plug in because sometimes, as uh, people in the diaspora, we're thinking, "Hey, I'm so far away." Think about all the multinationals. The CEO or the chief chief doesn't have to be in all the countries where they are. We just need to set up capacity to be able to do it. And the, the time is right for us to do it. Absolutely, I agree, I agree. Um, Dr. Mkamba, you had a question. Yeah, mine is not a question, it's just to, to re-emphasize uh, a request that I made. It would be grateful if the DG could share his PowerPoint over the, the products he was offering for us to go over and do this. Um, see which one. In fact, what, what we can do, let me, let me share just now, uh, even before we, Part, um, I'll share with you right away uh, on this Thank platform, you, so so you can you can then just download. It. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And Mainga says, uh, a "Great call, very informative. Looking forward to receiving the presentation. Thank you very much, Dr. Mangule." Um, uh, Onward, you had your comment as well before the doc leaves. 
Yeah, uh, I just wanted to thank him so much. Um, you know, some of these informations, even when we go around to CEC, I think sometimes you feel intimidated to just like, you, you, you can't start. And that's where you find most Zambians uh, uh, do, do not push so much to come and get the information. So thank you very much for that information. And uh, we'll still chat and still find out more. I think you have shared your number. Maybe you're a busy man. We may be throwing some WhatsApp uh, questions and how to go about it so that we can uh, progress. Of course, when I talked about the skills, I talked. I have a skill that I feel I can meet the competition even to those foreigners who are setting up uh, companies, but it needs funding. So when I took my, I think a uh, few years ago, <laughs> It, it didn't it didn't mature so uh, thank you very much for the information we'll still come on our, around that's an encouragement thank you thank you Arnold. thank you, thank you uh, doc there are more uh, uh more thanks or uh, thank you notes to you in the chats uh, from our friends uh, in zambia and the us um so in general uh, we really appreciated uh, this uh, conversation and uh, I also get the PowerPoint from you via email, and uh, I can share it on our St. Paul's WhatsApp group for the guys that want to see it. Um, but with, with that, uh, Doc, unless you have any last comments to say, uh, we, we would close this meeting and, uh, and uh, go about our different ways. And being a Friday, we like to say Friday in Jakarta, which is, uh, you know, go have some fun. Um, but also at our school, we had this um, motto that said uh, labor omnia visiti, which basically means um, uh, labor conquers all. So when we work hard, we succeed. <laughs> and this is why we do these programs and share information among ourselves so that we can uh, pull each other up a little bit. So with that, Doc, uh, we really appreciate uh, your expertise, your generosity of time and uh, all the information that you shared, and uh, hopefully we can uh, uh, succeed together. Thank you. Thank you so much, much appreciated. I've shared with the group the document. Uh, if you could just confirm if you have received it. Yes, I downloaded Thank you, mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Yeah. <clears throat> Great, so let me just take this opportunity uh, to thank you so much. I believe we have planted a seed, and um, this is a very, uh, appropriate and I would consider it strategic platform because of the reach. Um, so uh, spread the word around uh, in terms of what could be had. And let's, I would suggest that we continue the conversation. Uh, you know, th there's a lot that we have to do. Uh, we had to, we had to be found alive this time, you know, mm. as Zambians mm. uh, in order to develop this country. Yes. You know, nobody else but ourselves uh, should actually be in the forefront, in the trenches to develop this country. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. And, thank you so uh, all much. All the best. Thank you so much. Bye. All the best. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. And thank you so much, um, my chairperson. I think um, uh, he's the link uh, in, in all this. Um, I would not have, um, and you may not have, uh, you know, thought of uh, coming through this manner. So, thanks, yeah. Chair. Yeah, thank you so best. much, uh, Mr. Kazriman. Oh. Uh, you should see his, uh, his chat uh, emojis there. Number one, he says this was excellent. Number two, he's thankful for the presentation. And number three, is clapping, applauding, you know, what you've done and what uh, the whole thank team you. has done. So, <laughs> thank you. I just deconstructed it there, JSK, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, okay. bye for now. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Okay, guys. Uh, wow, that was powerful. That was something, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that's a good beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very nice. That's very informative. Yeah, he, he really did a good job. Yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting. <laughs>